Now, let us look at the anaerobic respiration and certain activities that are linked up with anaerobic respiration. So, anaerobic respiration is basically two types. As we discussed earlier, in one kind of anaerobic respiration that is in bacteria, and just before we discussed it, that even in our muscles, uh, in some cases, in certain situations, anaerobic respiration takes place where lactic acid is produced. And other case, in case of yeast, ethanol, alcohol is produced in the anaerobic respiration. So we can see that practically how the ethanol is produced, how the alcohol is produced. So to know that practically alcohol plus carbon dioxide are released during the process of fermentation. So I told you fermentation, it is the conversion of sugars to alcohols in absence of oxygen, that is with the help of yeast. So let us see what is that activity and what are required. Here we need a flask, we need a flask like this. So in the flask we need to take some solution. What solution we are going to take? We are going to take glucose, glucose solution. We are going to perform anaerobic respiration, that means absence of oxygen. So there should not be any oxygen in the raw material we are taking. So we prepare the glucose solution. Will it contain oxygen? Of course, it may contain some dissolved oxygen. We wanted to remove the dissolved oxygen also. So that is the reason boiled and cooled glucose solution. When it is boiled, the oxygen goes out the boiled and the cooled glucose. And one more thing to test whether if any other oxygen is present, we can add Janus Brie reagent to that. So in such a way you have taken the glucose solution. So now what is there in the flask? The top area is empty. That means there is air. The air may contain oxygen. So we don't want any oxygen in the content. If oxygen is there, no anaerobic respiration takes place, aerobic respiration takes place. So first we have taken the glucose solution and to this we are going to add the organisms which are uh, capable of doing fermentation. What is that organism? Yeast. So yeast is added to this glucose solution. Yeast and glucose, they can carry out fermentation but there should not be oxygen. So what we are doing is we are keeping liquid paraffin, liquid paraffin, paraffin is a fatty oily substance. So this oily substance it covers the liquid, it does not allow any air to come in contact with the liquid bottom. So we know that oils they float on water, the liquid paraffin floats on this glucose solution, it acts like a film or a cover. It does not allow any air to interact with the glucose solution. So there is no chance of oxygen interacting with this glucose. So now we made the glucose free from oxygen. So what we are doing now, we are going to arrange a cork like this and we are inserting a tube into this liquid. So this U-shaped bent tube, we have taken a bent tube and we take the bent tube to a test tube. So the test tube it contains calcium hydroxide or calcium lime water, lime water, calcium hydroxide mixed in water called as lime water. So basically you know why lime water is used in experiments to check the presence of carbon dioxide. If carbon dioxide interacts with the lime water, it converts the lime water milky. Calcium hydroxide is converted to calcium carbonate. So it shows that presence of carbon dioxide. By keeping lime water here, we can know whether the gas produced is carbon dioxide or not. So now we have a setup. Here we can have a thermometer also in addition. Now let us see. The glucose and yeast, they react. The yeast, they convert the glucose into alcohol by anaerobic respiration. And during this process, carbon dioxide gas is produced. 
and this gas it escapes through this bend pipe and it enters the test tube which contains lime water. So when the carbon dioxide enters into the lime water, the carbon dioxide gas reacts with calcium hydroxide and it makes uh, calcium carbonate. The lime water turns to carbon calcium carbonate which is milk white, so milky. By this setup, we can understand that in absence of oxygen, yeast convert the glucose into alcohol and carbon dioxide. So the liquid prepared here contains alcohol. That also can be tested. Alcohol has got different tests. So by that we can confirm the material synthesized or prepared here is alcohol. So this process conversion of sugars to alcohols is termed as fermentation. So generally when foods are fermented we can notice the food is fermented with the smell. Alcohols they have a distinct smell. So here I told you that we can sense whether it is alcohol the glucose solution is changed to alcohol or not. If you remove the liquid paraffin just if you smell then you will find some kind of smell of alcohol. You might, you might have smelled certain alcohols like spirit, surgical spirit, the spirit which is used to clean your skin in hospitals and uh, dressing time they use the spirit. It is an alcohol. So you can observe the change. The glucose is turned to some alcohol by smelling it. Even certain foods get fermented. If you see that idli or dosa batter, they prepare idli batter or dosa batter in the previous night to make the dosa. So what happens if you uh, leave the batter outside the refrigerator for one or two days? So you see it becomes frothy. So many gas bubbles enters into that and it gives some different order, source smell. So that is fermentation. In your lower classes you have seen the experiment with maida dough. Adding some yeast to the maida dough it makes the maida dough to rise which makes the bread so soft and fluffy. So all these are examples of fermentation, commercial use or application of fermentation. So fermentation is a process on basing which various alcoholic beverages, beer, wine and other beverages are prepared by using the microorganisms. So and in this you may get one more doubt. How do we separate alcohol from this mixture? The glucose and yeast. Will the whole solution turns to alcohol? No. A part of the solution it became to alcohol but how do we separate how can we separate you learnt in your chemistry lessons how to separate two miscible liquids alcohol and water alcohol has got low boiling point water boils at 100 degrees Celsius but alcohol boils at 70 degrees Celsius now by a process called as fractional distillation Fractional distillation, when a mixture of water and alcohol are boiled, the alcohol starts boiling at 70 degrees and it is evaporated. So the vapors of alcohol can be collected separately by fractional distillation. In such a way we can separate the alcohol. 